Hey everyone, thanks for joining us this Sunday for worship. Our prayer is that today's worship experience will be a blessing to you and your family as we honor God and remember just how good He has been to us. We start a brand new teaching series today called Awaken. And today we zero in on what it means to hunger and thirst for righteousness. And by the way, we have a cool giveaway today. It's a stadium cup with the theme of this teaching series printed on it as a great reminder that God fills us up and then pours us out. If you would like to receive a cup, simply click the link in the chat a little later in the service and we'll ship one to you ASAP. Also, be sure to join us for the next four weeks as we awaken to the Spirit of God and His leading. As always, we'll be celebrating communion together later in the service and we would love for you to participate. So be sure to have bread and juice nearby. Again, thank you for joining us today. Yeah. 
great things. I'm telling you what, if you don't know about the goodness of God and the great things that he, he has done, I'm glad you are here this morning because that's what we're gonna focus on is our God who does miraculous, awesome, wonderful things. Isn't that good? Aren't you guys glad? Are you in the right place this morning or what? I'm telling you, I'm glad to be here. And uh, whether you're here out of habit or by invitation or online, we're so grateful that you're here. Can we welcome all those online? Amen. We're so grateful. We're so grateful to be in the house of the Lord together because I'm telling you, this is where your strength finds, your soul finds strength. Your heart can rest for a minute. You're with like-minded people who love the Lord and are striving to serve God and to love God just like you are. So you're in the right place, amen? Come on. All right, I got something for you here. First of all, happy Independence Day. Boom, we got red, white, and blue, come on, yeah. Uh, I love it, I love it. I'm so grateful to live in this country. I'm so grateful to be an American, but I'm so grateful to be a Christian. I'm so grateful to be a Christian. Man, I just, I can't even tell you. Sometimes I look at what's happening around the world, and I think to myself, how do they do it without Christ? How, how does this happen without it, without Jesus? And I'm telling you, as much as we come here to delight in the Lord and to focus on Him, I wanna encourage you with something. God is grateful, God is glad that you are His. Not that, not that it can't go, we're grateful to Him, but I want you to know God delights in you. He delights in your worship. He delights in your praise. He delights in your attitude. He delights in your actions when they are geared and focused towards Him. Listen to what He says. It says in Psalms 18, 16 through 17, He says, He reaches down from heaven and rescues me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemies, from those who hated me and were too strong for me. He led me to a place of safety. He rescued me because he delights in me. Amen. Isn't that good? Oh, oh, man. For him to delight in me means that I get to come into this place, into this moment, with no hesitation, with no fear, because I know that Jesus, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, delights in me. I don't have to be afraid. We can step in with boldness and confidence and allow God's love to penetrate all the way from mind, body, soul, and spirit. He can come in and do a work that I could never do by myself. So God, this is our prayer. Lord, we're here for you. We've come to worship. God, we just ask that your spirit would show up as it already has and that we would be able to worship you fully, God. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. amen.
worship you. Amen. God, we love you. We worship you. We praise you that we have victory in you, that our hope has a name and his name is Jesus. And the church said, Jesus, Jesus. Hope has a name and his name is Jesus. Jesus, we love you. We worship you and we praise you with all that we are. We continue our worship and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. Do you want to know more about God? Do you have questions about your faith? Are you struggling to find purpose in life? Is church really the place for you? Rooted is the answer to all of those questions. It's the best environment we have at Journey to help you grow in your relationship with God. There's a good reason why more than 800 people from Journey have gone through Rooted. It's literally life-changing. Rooted meets you where you are in your journey of faith and helps you take the next step, whatever that next step looks like. The next Rooted session begins on Thursday, September 16th, and we hope that you'll join us for it. Just go to journeychristian.com slash rooted to register and reserve your spot. If Rooted has been a blessing to you, or if you want it to be a blessing in someone else's life, consider giving to Journey. Your generosity supports ministries that God uses to change lives. Here are the ways you can give back to God at Journey. The easiest way is simply to go to journeychristian.com slash give. So now let's take a look at the life change from our last Rooted Celebration. Tonight really is a celebration of how good God is. It's also a celebration of what God has done in your life for the past 10 weeks. We're gonna see some cardboard testimonies of life change, where people were when they started, and how God has transformed their lives into something brand new. has been phenomenal. Some of the things I got out of it was community and friendships and brotherhood and sisterhood. And it led to a profound understanding or revelation for me about some needs and, 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 and wounds that I'm still dealing with. And I'm very grateful for Journey Church. I really love the church, love the people. From the first day, I felt very welcome. I heard about the Rooted, and I thought it would be a great way to learn from others' experiences, and it's really key to be in community and fellowshipping with others. gone through Rooted one time before as a participant, loved it so much, came back and decided to be a leader. Second time around was even more insightful than the first. Truly blessed by having this opportunity and uh, I hope you'll enjoy Rooted too. journey. How are we doing? I need to confess something out the get-go. I am crying for no reason. And um, please don't leave. Uh, I've been, uh, my name is Dustin Agar, one of the pastors. I've been on vacation uh, for a, a little bit and then had a little study break and I haven't been here in several weeks and I'm just so grateful for journey. And I'm just grateful for you and uh, I don't know, I'm going to try to do this. This is weird. Um, <laughs> 
stick to the notes, so I apologize. Uh, Lake County, things are awkward here in Apopka online. It's awkward. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so good to have you uh, if you're joining online as well as Lake County. I wanna wish everybody happy 4th of July as well. Just so grateful uh, for America, to be American, to live in America. So grateful. And my prayers are our best days are ahead as a country. That's my prayer. And I believe that God wants to use the local church to do just that. And, and so if you're joining us, maybe you're celebrating at the beach, maybe you're in the mountain, wherever you're at, we just, uh, we're glad that you're here. We're in a brand new series called Awaken. And today we're gonna be talking about hungering thirst for more of God. And, and really kind of the idea of this uh, series came as I was studying a guy named Evan Roberts. Evan Roberts was an evangelist and uh, really he led one of the greatest revivals that we know. In 1905, he was the leader of the Welsh revival that saw over 100,000 people give their lives to Christ in six months. It's incredible. And so Evan Roberts, so I began to study him and he had several points that he would uh, believe in and teach and kind of share. And, and the, really the four things that stood out to me were, were these four things. And we're gonna walk through them over the next four weeks. The first thing he says, revival happens when we hunger and thirst for more God. Revival happens when we confess known sin so we're able to receive forgiveness through Jesus. Revival takes place when we obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And revival takes place when we publicly profess Jesus Christ. And I believe that these actually all kind of lead to one another. I think it's a cyclical approach. And uh, this is what I mean by that. When we hunger and thirst for more God, hey, Evan, you go to the next screen. When we hunger and thirst for more God, it leads us into the presence of God. And when we are in the presence of God, it leads to confession. The Holy Spirit convicts us. When we uh, begin to confess our sin, it allows us to hear the Holy Spirit in our lives more clearly. When we begin to hear the Holy Spirit, it opens doors up to do the things the work of the Spirit are calling us to do, which allow us to proclaim Christ publicly. And so what we're gonna do in the next month is we're gonna look at this entire cycle to see how God might bring personal revival to you, to your family, to our community. And I don't think a, a revival is ever about one person, one pastor, one church. I think it's bigger than anybody could ever think or imagine. Danish theologian and philosopher Soren Kierkegaard, he shares a story about a, a geese who was flying with his flock and um, all of a sudden it got wounded and it kind of stumbles into this barn and uh, it's full of chickens. It's got this chicken coop running around, it's muddy. And for a season it's hurt, it can't fly, it's stuck in this chicken coop. And as it is, it begins to act like a chicken. It begins to, to eat like a chicken. It begins to kind of make its way like a chicken. And all of a sudden he's healed and he knows that he's healed and he knows he could fly. And then one day he hears honking overhead. It's his tribe flying and soaring through the air. And he begins to uh, get excited. He begins to take off, take flight, and he doesn't have any problems. He's completely able to fly, he gets two, three, four feet off the ground. And he says, you know what? I think I'd rather stay back in the chicken coop. And he sacrifices the ability to soar the way God created him. And he spends the rest of his life playing the role of a chicken. And you see, I think we can do that sometimes, church. I think God has called you and I to soar spiritually greater than we could ever imagine. And I think we're okay living in a chicken coop. We're okay playing in the mud because we think that's as good as it could be. But I, I just believe God has so much more in store for you. And so we're gonna talk about this idea, how to revive your spiritual life. And I don't care who you are, what season of life you're in, we all need a reviving from time to time. We're not always on fire for, for the Lord. There are some days that I'd rather watch a ball game than read the Bible. And some of y'all are judging me right now. Don't judge me. <laughs> there are some days that we rather crave other things. than I mean, it's just not constant. We need a reviving of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And that's what this series and that's what today's message is about. I heard a, a friend of mine, he, he said once, he said a top reason we aren't experiencing revival may be because we're content to live without it. You see, that has a lot to do with hunger. You see, the good news with revival is it doesn't require a resume. You don't need all this experience. Some of you are like, man, I've never read the entire Bible. I've never even read the Bible. What are you talking about, revival? I feel like that's later on. No, 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 no. 
There is no experience, there is no resume. What it takes is, it takes hunger and a little bit of faith. And that's something we could all bring to the table today, amen? I also believe this, we can't stop revival, but we can miss it. You see, you and I don't have the power to stop the move of God, but we can miss it. And Journey, my prayer is that none of you miss the revival that God wants to do in and through you. This season of my life, I felt like God gave me a phrase, kind of gave me a word. I, I felt like he spoke it very clearly to me, and it was this. And I've had it for, for a couple years, and it's this phrase, feed hungry people. I felt like that's what God's called me to do in this season, to feed hungry people. And, and we, we wanna feed hungry people in the residency with our interns. We wanna feed hungry people now. We wanna feed, uh, whether you've been in the church for 50 years or five minutes, we wanna feed hungry people. When you look at the life of Jesus, that's who we hung out with is hungry people. The people that weren't hungry, the Pharisees, he didn't, he didn't really care for, to spend and waste that time because he already knew where their heart was. They were apathetic but Jesus loved being around hungry people. And Journey, this is what I love about you, you're hungry. You show up so hungry. I love how you're hungry for worship. You're hungry for the word. You're hungry for rooted. You're hungry to serve. You are hungry and I love that about you, Journey. Absolutely love that. And I would encourage you, just keep leaning in to what God wants to do because this is what I believe. Hungry people always get fed. I believe that. I believe that hungry people always, always, always get fed. Now, I don't think it would be appropriate for me to talk about being hungry on the 4th of July without talking about Joey Chestnut. Some of y'all know who Joey Chestnut is, some of you don't. Joey Chestnut is a hero to some. I think that might be a stretch. However, he is the Nathan's hot dog eating champion. <laughs> Dare I call him an athlete. Joey Chestnut, I don't know if you know this, every 4th of July, there is a Nathan's hot dog eating contest. It's today at noon, okay? Joey Chestnut has won 13 times. Last year, in 10 minutes, he ate 75 hot dogs. We're gonna watch a video of this. I'm just kidding, that would be disgusting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. How gross would that be? We're not gonna watch that. <laughs> Ain't nobody wanna see that, Joey, relax, all right. <laughs> Seriously, and this is what he lost in 2015, okay? And he was interviewed after loss, and this is what he said. He said it was a bummer, but it woke me up. It definitely woke me up. It made me hungry like I hadn't been hungry in a long time. <laughs> like my man, like you lost and probably still threw down 70 hot dogs, okay? <laughs> But here, here's the takeaway that I took when I read that. This guy gets paid to be hungry and he still lost his hunger. Like you and I can lose our hunger, can't we? I mean, isn't that what it says in Revelations? Like they lost their first love. And if somebody that gets paid to be hungry can lose his hunger, I think you and I from time to time may have lost or can lose our hunger. As a matter of fact, I think there's a lot of people that are in this room that are watching, maybe in Lake County, that you're not hungry and yet you're still leaning in, you're watching right now. And if you're not hungry for more of God and you're listening to this, let me just say, I'm so proud of you. Because I think that that means that you've moved past Christianity being based off your emotion and it's now a commitment. And that's awesome. You're not just listening when you feel like it, you're listening because it's the right thing to do. And I think you're in good company King David said this in Psalm 119, 35. He said, direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart toward your statues and not towards selfish gain. Turn my eyes from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. So he's even saying, man, I have uh, my eyes and my attention and my time. They go to worthless things. They go to things that are selfish and I love how even King David, somebody that's known after a, a man after God's own heart, still has the same problem I think some of us have where we lack hunger from time to time because we're looking at worthless or selfish things. And if that's you, I just wanna say a prayer for all of us in the room. I'm gonna just pray for us real quick. God, I just pray, would you allow each and every one of us to have a hunger and thirst for more of you? Would you revive something new by your Holy Spirit in us and through us today? In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So whether you're hungry or not hungry, I'm glad you're here. And I think God delights in that.
So today we're gonna be looking at 2 Kings chapter four. If you have your Bible, you go ahead and open it. Uh, maybe you're following along on an app or an iPad or whatever you have. Uh, maybe the YouVersion app is a free app. We'll talk more about that later. If you don't have anything, it's all good. We're gonna have it on the screen. 2 Kings chapter four, uh, it talks about this family. In this family, we have a husband and wife and we have two sons. Unfortunately, the husband passes away. We don't know how, we don't know the circumstance, we just know he passed away. So now we have a widow and two sons and they have debt. And the debt collector comes to take care of the debt. They don't have the money to pay it off. So the debt collector is going to take the two sons and enslave them to pay for the debt. The widow cries out to a prophet, a man named Elijah for help. And I wanna unpack who Elijah is. Elijah was a prophet. Elijah was a disciple of Elijah, okay? Elijah was a disciple of Elijah. I can't imagine being in a meeting with these two. Can you? <laughs> like, or, or being the spouse of one of them. Like, no, I didn't call you, I called the other one. Like, okay, so, so this guy discipled this guy. Okay, Elijah discipled Elijah. And before Elijah left, he said, hey, what is one thing I can do for you? And this is what he said, and I love it. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elijah, tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken from you? He said, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. You see, Elijah was hungry for more. And his heart, he, I mean, he was a, they, they were both prophets, so he could ask for anything. And he said, I just wanna, I'm hungry for more, God. I want a double portion of what you have. And God ended up answering it and gave him a double portion and so Elijah ended up following his mentor and the guy that discipled him. And so now we're in 2 Kings 4, 2, and it says this. Elijah replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Listen. It's really important. We just glossed over it. Your servant has nothing there at all. This is where a lot of us are. And this is where God loves to shine, except a small jar of olive oil. And I think what we do is we minimize the small offering that we give to God. And God's like, no, no, no. That's the breeding ground of miracles. When you take something that you think is a small offering to the Lord, that's when he does some of his best work. And some of you, you're, you're asking for a miracle and you're thinking, I got nothing at all, but you do have something. And I would say, whatever that something is, offer it to the Lord. Because watch what ends up happening. 2 Kings 4, 3 through 7, it says this. Elijah said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you with your sons. Pour oil into the jars as each one is filled. Put it to the side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there's not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God and he said, go and sell the oil and pay off your debts. You and your sons could live on what is left. Let me walk you through what just happened. Okay, so we have these cups. These are the jars. She's got a little bit. She, said, she didn't even remember it. She just said, I have nothing. I just have except this. Go gather some containers and pour it. This little thing filled this up. And then it filled up another one. And then it filled up another one. It doesn't make sense at this. They're starting to realize, okay, God's in something. And it literally fills up the entire town's containers with just this little thing. But it's not a little thing when it's offered to the hands of the Lord. You see, God doesn't take inventory the same way we do. And the moment we begin to understand his inventory is different than ours, that's when he can begin to do miracles. And, and she ends up filling all of them in the entire town until they're all full by this one. It does, it does not make sense. Maybe you're here and you're thinking, man, I, I just, I wanna raise godly kids. But we have split custody and I just see my kids a little bit. Just take what you have and offer it to the Lord and let him do the miracle. Some of you are like, man, I'm massively in debt. I don't know what to do. Take the little that you have and offer it to the Lord and let him do a miracle in your life. And just see, just see what happens. You see, this is what I believe. We're not in control of the miracle, but we are in control of what we bring to God. I don't know what the miracle is. I can't control the miracle, but I can't control what I bring to God. Let me illustrate it this way. 
I'm playing cups. Any of y'all play cups? I'm also bad. Okay. This is a thimble. Fun fact, I've known the word thimble for a long time and have no idea what it's for, okay? No idea. I believe that if you give God a thimble, he'll fill it up. I also believe that if you give God a bucket, he'll fill it up. I think the capacity that you're willing to give God is what he'll fill up in your life. You wanna give God five minutes a day, he'll fill it up. You wanna give him an hour, he'll fill it up. You wanna give God one day a week, he'll fill it up. You wanna give him every day of your life, he'll fill it up. You wanna give God certain parts of your life, he'll fill it up. You wanna give him your relationships, whatever you give God, he'll fill it up. Which means we have the control to handle the capacity in which we want God to move in our life. So how are you growing in your capacity? How are you growing to go from a thimble to a bucket? I love that. You see, the oil stopped flowing based on the widow's capacity. And so you might be asking, what are some ways that I can grow my capacity? Maybe, maybe the way you grow from a thimble to a bucket is you wake up 10 minutes early and you get in the Bible or you pray or you worship. Maybe that's you going from thimble to bucket and God fills you every time. I promise you he'll fill you. Maybe uh, the way that you go from thimble to bucket is maybe you jump into a Bible study, a small group or rooted. M maybe it's inviting God into your workplace or into a relationship. I don't know what little bit you need to take and offer to the Lord, but I do know this. Whatever you give him, he'll fill. Whatever you give God, he'll fill. And we've seen this with this, this person named Levan. And Levan is the, one of the people that we have hired as a police officer to serve and protect you. And Levan serves Journey Christian Church and she's hungry for God. You see, this isn't her church home. She's on duty to work here. But while she's on duty, she's still hungry. And she was hungry and God started stirring and doing something. And I want you to watch this video to see how God ended up using her. Check this out. Well, hello, Journey. My name is Lee Van Oliver. I'm a law enforcement officer and I work for a local law enforcement agency. The uh, deputy that assigns the off-duty signed me here to journey specifically to Root It. And I had no idea what Root It was. I was just kind of curious. I saw all the decoration with all the rooted stuff and I saw people coming in, signing up for this class. I, over time, I, I see these people coming out and they looked like they were just so excited to be in this rooted class. And I kept saying, you know, one day I'm, a, one day I'm gonna take Rooted. Well, lo and behold, this last Rooted class, Pastor Randy came up to me and said, hey, Sister Levan, I hear you're interested in taking Rooted, Rooted class. I said, yeah, probably when I retire and, uh, you know, I have time to focus and, you know, be a part of it. He said, well, Shonda, won't you give Miss Van a, uh, a book? And so I came in, we had the praise and worship, then we broke out into our groups, and I met my sisters, my Rooted sisters, for the first time. My introduction was, hi, my name is Levan Oliver. You all know what I do. And I said, I don't even know how I got in this class. Pastor Renna just told me that I'm coming. Uh, but I, all, I, all I know is that I want to learn more and more about the God. I'm hungry and I'm thirsty to know about the Lord. So as we continue to go through the different weeks, we were able to pray with each other, pray for each other. We would send texts to each other in groups, and it was just a, it was an awesome experience. So I got to know some root sisters that I never knew I had in this world. And at the Rooted celebrate, Celebration that day, I got to uh, go on the stage and present my cardboard testimony. And I, I said, I'm gonna put, I was hungry and thirsty after Rooted, I became filled. I, f I became filled with the knowledge of, of Jesus Christ in a way that I've never known it. I became filled with the hearts of, beat of these people, my sisters that I've never known, never knew that I was gonna experience that. I believe this was a divine appointment assignment by God. And no doubt in my mind, I'll be better because of it. Come on, church. That cool.
You see, I could have easily done the video and then just said something about you, but I wanted you to come up here because I knew they would do that. <laughs> because they love, they love people that are hungry for God. And you have led the way. And they probably think that I told you to write hungry and thirsty on your cardboard, but I did not. <laughs> and so I just wanna say thank you for being a leader. She's even told us she's gonna take Rooted to her church and she's gonna keep the hunger going, which I absolutely love. Can we just say thank you one more time for her heart, for what she does? Thank you, thank you. So grateful, so, so grateful. So this is what I believe in this series we're gonna do. The first two weeks, we're gonna talk about this idea of God filling us up. But I think that God fills us up so that we can pour ourselves out. You see, we're not meant to be grace hoarders. We're meant to receive the kindness and the goodness of God so that we can be, to be blessed to be a blessing. And so what we have is we have this cup that says, fill me up, pour me out. It says, fill me up, pour me out. Some of you, you don't care at all about this cup. Some of you are already wondering, how can I get 1,700 of those, okay? <laughs> when you leave... Both at Lake County, Apopkin, we're gonna have them available online as well. Every single one of you, you'll get one of these cups. How many cups are you gonna get? One, one of these cups. <laughs> Listen, I know your auntie in New Jersey, she wants 17 up. No, you're gonna get one, okay? God has chosen you today to be the cup bearer, okay? You'll get one cup. And here's the thing, just put it someplace in this series that you remember, God, fill me up and pour me out. God, would you, that might be one of the most powerful, dangerous prayers you could pray. Lord, would you fill me up and would you pour me out? And so on the way out, you'll get more instructions on how to get that, but we want that to be a gift from us to you as a reminder of this series. And this idea of being full of God, I heard a, a friend of mine, he, he, he's a pastor, he said, man, somebody came up to him and said, man, I wanna, I wanna hear more of God. How, how do I hear? How do I get full of God? He said, well, read the Bible. God will speak to you. No, 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 no. You don't understand. I want to hear God audibly. And he said, oh, no worries. Read the Bible out loud. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> I'm telling you, the word of God is so powerful. I want to encourage you to read the Bible and uh, everything, especially in America, we are just this engine of go, 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 do, do, do. This idea of stopping and doing nothing almost seems un-American. And maybe it is, because we're believers first and Americans second. But you were not created to produce, you were created to abide. You were created to sit at the feet of Jesus. I want you to listen to this in Mark 1, 35. It says this, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his, com and, and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Let me just tell you this. When you get away to have a time alone with God, everybody's gonna be looking for you. There is always things to do on the to-do list. What, and this is, this is the most pow powerful person on the planet, and he got away because he realized it was that important to be with the Father. And they come and said, everybody's looking for you. I know but this is more important than whatever you have. And, and, and I, my prayer is that we would get to a stage in our relationship with God where we can carve out five, 10, 20 minutes, whatever it is, to where everybody's looking for you. I know, but right now I'm with the Father. And this is where I belong. And so my prayer for you is if you hunger and thirst, you might be wondering, what does that look like practically? It looks like sitting with the Father. This is great, we're called to do this, to have church. But, but the difference between this and other religions is that it is a personal relationship with Jesus. You have the ability and the expectation to meet with Jesus on your own, in your living room, in your bedrooms, in your car, not just in church on a Sunday. And that's the beauty of Jesus. He desires that. That's what Matthew 6, is all about. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So here's really three practical ways. We've talked about this before, how to actually spend time with God. First one would be this, pick a time. As you read the Psalms over and over and over, it talks about early and often. I'm not gonna say you have to wake up early to spend time with God. I would, some of you are night people. 
I would just say this, I do think God deserves your best. If your best is at night, give them at night. If it's in the morning, give them the morning. But make it, make it your best and often. Second one would be pick a place. The first one is pick a time. Like schedule the time. Create the time, schedule it. Pick a place. Don't, don't allow it to, any of this to be random. So maybe it's your bedroom. Maybe you have a home office. Maybe it's a porch, front or back. So maybe it's on the bus to work or on the bus to school. Whatever it is, pick a place. And the third one is pick a plan. So, I mean, I get the fact that when you open up the Bible, there's a lot of options. And I, I wanna encourage you, don't just open it and wing it. There are so many uh, plans out there. I would say if you're looking to grow in your relationship with God, just start in the book of Luke and just keep going. But maybe you, you want or need a plan to accompany you. There's actually literally thousands of plans free available on this thing called YouVersion, which is the Bible app. You can download it on any of your devices. And it literally has tons and tons of plans. I had a buddy of mine reach out for Father's Day and he said, hey, let's do a five-day plan uh, together on how to be better dads. Literally, it was just five days and we did it and it was on how to be better dads. They have plans for five days, three days, all the way up to 365 days. And you just go and check it out. They have, literally they have some for uh, police officers, first responders, to military, to teachers. They have anything and everything to help walk alongside you in your faith. So I would say this, pick a, pick a time, pick a place, pick a plan. Don't let it be random. Let it be a commitment. Psalm 34, four says this, it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. This word sought, every time in the Old Testament, it's not the same word for seek or sought. It's different from time to time. But this word, sought, is darash. D-A-R-A-S-H, darash. And what it means is it doesn't mean to seek just one time. It's not even a, a spiritual word. It just means you don't just seek something. You don't look for something one time. It means you do it over and over and over continually. And literally the translation is so much that you end up wearing out a path. And I love that. He's saying, I sought the Lord so much that I wore out a path. I sought the Lord so much that I wore out a path. It was consistent. And he answered me. It goes on in Psalm 22, six, the afflicted will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek derash, Seek him, we'll praise the Lord. Psalm 119.10, I seek, Darash, I seek you over and over and over. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. And here's the cool part. As you and I are seeking after more of God, as we are doing this and we're wearing out a path. You see, God's not just sitting up there just waiting and saying, yep, that's right, come to me. God's actually doing the same to you. I love how Psalm 119 ends. It's the biggest chapter in the Bible. And this is the very last verse. And it says, I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek, that's Darash, your servant. For I have not forgotten your commands. And so the Psalm is saying, I'm coming, I'm coming daily, daily. And then God says, no, 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 I'm coming too. You see with God, it's not hide and seek. It's not that, that you're seeking for him and he's hiding, it's really seek and seek. As you seek after God, he's seeking after you. And he's been seeking after you long before we've been seeking after him. And he delights as, as we heard earlier, Crystal said, he delights in you seeking after him. I wanna close with this story. This is a story that, uh, that has been common. You probably heard this, maybe you haven't, um, but I, I never heard this ending until recently. This is a story about a guy named Charles Blunden who was a tightrope daredevil and he's famous for walking across Niagara Falls. And as he did this, uh, he went to the audience and he says, how many of y'all think that I could walk across the Niagara Falls? Everybody's like, yes, yes, we do. He said, how many of you think that I could carry somebody on my back? And everybody's like, yes, we believe you. How many volunteers do we have? And that's the story that I've known and heard, and maybe you've heard that, but I didn't know this part. And, and it could be false. <laughs> but supposedly rumor is the kind of the hype man, the manager said, you know what, I'll do it after nobody else. And the manager clung to him as they're walking over Niagara Falls and every step that you can imagine that Charles is making, 
the, the manager is freaking out and shifting his body, clinging to dear life. And every time he thinks he's doing that to save himself, he's actually causing more and more risk because Charles, it's making Charles more vulnerable to the point where Charles screams from the top of his lungs because you hear the roaring uh, uh, waves going and crashing. And he screams this, he says, stop! Only cling to me if you want to live. Do nothing but cling to me. And I think Jesus would say the same thing. Stop! Stop trying to solve everything, be everything, do everything. If you want to live, just cling to me. That's it, that's it. It's not a to-do list. It's okay for 10 minutes of the world to go by without it needing you to fix something, to produce something, to be something, because I just want you to cling to me. Amen. Just cling to me. <laughs> Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, God, God, thank you for being a God that not only allows us to cling to you, you ask us to. That's what John 15 is all about. You call us to abide in you as you with us. And so God, I pray you've given us this, this heartbeat, which I love in, in America to, to go, to make tomorrow better than yesterday. But, but the, the other side of the coin of that is we could feel like we always have to produce, even for you. But yet you, you don't want us to produce, you just want us to abide. And so God, would you help us to simply cling to you? God, would you revive the parts of our heart that are cold, that are stale, that might be hurt from church or Christians? And would you revive it and make it soft that we'd hunger and thirst for more of you like never before in this season? And God, would you, would you fill us up and then would you pour us out? It's in Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen, 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 church. We're gonna continue a time of worship and I'm excited about the song that we're gonna lean into. It's called Nothing Else. And, uh, and the lyrics of, of part of it, it goes like this. It says, I got caught up in your presence. I just wanna sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. And so I wanna ask you, would you, um, would you not just sing this, but would you pray it? Would you let it impact you and would you let it hit you? And if you wanna stand and sing this with everything you have, do that. If you wanna sit and meditate on it, do that. Whatever you feel comfortable to take this next song in, we want that to, to be a thing for you. And then we have next steps here. Maybe, maybe you're thinking, man, I've never hungered and thirst for God ever. And I want today to be the first day. That's beginning a relationship with Jesus. Right here, we have uh, Pastor Randy. He'd love to talk to you more about that. We'd love to help you explore what following Jesus is all about. Maybe you, do, maybe you wanna get baptized. We have some baptisms taking place this morning. Last week, we saw 11. Maybe you wanna get baptized. I don't know what it is you need to do to take a next step, but don't miss this moment. Go ahead and let's stand and let's worship Jesus.
When I forgot that you're enough Take me back to where we started Holy 
love you. We recognize that only you can satisfy the thirst and the hunger inside. God, we thank you for pouring out your spirit, for pouring into us. God, we give you the little that we have or the abundance of what you've given us. We give it back. And we ask that you multiply it in a way that only you can do. God, we love you. We worship you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, and all of God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. You may be seated. The Gospel of John says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. What more could we ask for? What more could we want? I like Max Licato's words. He says, when we make room for him in our hearts, he makes room for us in his house. We celebrate communion each week because we need reminders. And this bread reminds us of Jesus' body, which was given for us and the cup of juice, a reminder of his blood. And so as we take these emblems, they remind us that he died for us so that we can live for him. And let's do that right now. Pray with me. Father, we're so grateful for your love for us, that you gave your life in our place on the cross. And because of that, we can live for you today. We thank you and we pray this in your son's name. Amen. Every week we see God changing lives. And last week was no exception. As many people chose to give their lives to Jesus and be baptized into him. Maybe today you're ready to take that step of faith. You believe and now you want to express your belief through baptism. If that's you, congratulations. We're thrilled for you and would love to help make that happen. Just go to journeychristian.com slash baptism and follow the prompts and we'll be in touch soon. Maybe you've already been baptized and you're looking to awaken your faith and take a next step. Simply go to journeychristian.com slash next steps and click on the link that best fits where God is leading you right now. Whatever your next step, we're here for you. Okay, it's been great worshiping with you today, and we hope to connect with you again next Sunday. Until then, God bless you, and remember, through Jesus, anything is possible.